All right, so again, everything in this chapter is all about having two light waves that start in phase and travel different distances. Well then, if they're traveling different distances, by the time they meet again, they might be in phase or out of phase. Um, so the places where they're in phase, we get bright spots, and the places where they're out of state, phase, we get dark spots. And so we just have different apparatuses that can separate the beam of light into different sources. So one thing we could have is two slits um, to separate in different sources. Um, that would give us two sources. Or we could have hundreds of slits. That would give us hundreds of sources that can, that can interfere. Now, you also have the situation of only one slit. So here we have the barrier again. And here we have one slit. And here we have the screen. Here's our center line. Now, it would seem like this would not be interference anymore, because it would seem like all the light is going through the same slit. So it would seem like if it stays in phase, it would, uh, it would still be in phase. However, here we use uh, Huygens' principle. I don't know how to pronounce that. Huygens', Huygens principle? Uh, so Huygens' principle is that, so let's say we have a beam of light, say, that's coming through here. We have a beam of light that's coming through here, so we have a wave front, a wave front that's coming through the slit. Well, Huygens', Huygens principle is that every point on the wavelength, uh, on the wave front, acts like a source of its, own, of its own wave. You can treat every point on the wave front as a point source for a new wave. You can treat every point on the wave front as a new source. Every point on the wave front is a new source for a wave. So if there's a continuous beam of light that's coming through this slit, that's actually a term I saw on uh, one of your instructor's uh, sample exams, Huygens' principles. So that's a good thing to know. He actually, he just had a qualitative pro problem where he said, explain Huygens' principle and use it to explain something else. Right. So that's a, so maybe we'll talk about that when we're prepping for the exam, but that's a, that's a term you'd want to know. Okay, well, the, how, how, does it, uh, how does it explain the diffraction here? So we have a beam of light going through the slit, but this point in the beam of light can, act, can be treated like a source of its own beam. And then this point in the light can be treated like a separate source. And this point in the light can be treated like a separate source. And this point can be treated like a separate source. Now, of course, I'm not saying that they're only going to this point. Right? I'm just focusing on all the light that's going from each source to this point. There would also be light coming from each source down to this point down here. There's light coming from each source to each point on the screen. So there would also be light going this way. You would also have light coming from every source to this point. And you could have, uh, I could draw a similar diagram for every single point on the screen. Obviously, things don't get too messy then. So I'm actually going to erase this here, too, now. You don't need to draw that in. So we'll just focus on one point. So the point is we can get the multiple sources even without the slits just because of Huygens principle. Huygens principle is basically that a single wavefront of light is already split up into a bunch of different point sources. We can treat each of the points on that wavefront as its own point source of light even without the slits. Okay. The light that's going through, like it's traveling through it. Each point, like it's like as if it splits off. Each point is like it's generating its own wave. So it's like so here's the wave front. So here's a point on the wave and it's generating its own ripples, its own waves. And then this point over here is generating its own waves. So I, maybe I should have said each point on uh, the wavefront acts as a point source for uh, spherical waves. Each point uh, on the wavefront acts as a point source for spherical waves. This point also would do spherical waves. And this point would do the same thing. Okay, 
So it's as if, um, at this point, we, uh, if you think of it as water waves, as if we dropped a stone at all these different points here, and they're all generating their own little ripples that come out. Now, how do you perceive this? Well, notice that in the middle here, now the wavefront is tangent to all the ripples. The wavefront is tangent to all the ripples that are being generated in Huygens' principle. Yeah, tangent to all these individual, uh, so that I should say the combined wavefront from all the sources is just tangent to the individual wavefronts that you're getting from each of the point sources. So for example, what does the wavefront look like here in the middle? Well, it just looks like a flat line. You can see how in the middle here, the tangent to all these little all these circles would just be a flat line. So if the light was originally going straight, as a planar wave, over here it still seems to be going straight. But the interesting thing is that when you get to the borders, the tangents are curved. So here's where the light starts to spread out over here. Uh, in the middle, all the, different, uh, all the different ripples are adjacent to each other. All the different wavefronts are adjacent to each other. So their tangent is just a straight line. But when you get to the side, there's only, there's only this one source. And there's nothing to be tangent to it. So here we actually get the curve. So I said before that Huygens principle is that each point in the wavefront acts as a point source for uh, spherical wavefronts. So you might ask, why doesn't the overall wave become spherical? Yeah. Well, the, the reason is that if, if you have a whole bunch of spherical wavefronts next to each other, together they combine to make a plane. It's like uh, this. If you have a whole bunch of spheres right next to each other, when you combine them together, the tangent is just flat. There's better pictures than I can draw of this in your book. In the book, they show how Huygens principle uh, works here so that you can get um, flat in the middle of all the point sources. However, Huygens principle becomes interesting when you get to the end of the wavefront. Because at the end, there are no adjacent spheres, and then you actually get a circular wavefront. And then as the wavefront moves out, there's more and more curving at the edges. So let's say we turned the lights off in here, so that it was completely dark. And, but you know there's light in the hallway, right? So let's say then I open the door and let the light in. Well, you know, the light would be coming straight through the doorway, right? However, the light would still reach all the parts of the room. Yeah. How does it do that? Well, the reason is that waves bend around obstacles. When a wave goes through an obstacle, we can see here that it starts curving at the side of the obstacle. <clears throat> this is one of the uh, consequences of this uh, spherical wavefronts principle, from Huygens principle. So we can see that in the middle of the wavefront, even though there's a bunch of spherical wavefronts, they all come together to be flat. But when you're, at the, at, when you're at the end of the barrier, there's just this one spherical wavefront, which is forming a curve. I'm not drawing it very great, but it keeps bending out more and more in this direction. There's a better picture of this in the book. So anyway, this shows how waves can uh, bend around obstacles. They don't just go straight when they go through something. Uh, they start curving out when you go through it. Think, think of it again like uh, a water wave. If a water wave came through uh, a slit, it wouldn't just go straight through the slit. It would start spreading out to the sides. Why do waves spread out to the sides? They spread out to the sides um, because of this idea that each point on the wavefront is like a new little source for little spherical waves. So the points on the edges are sending out their own little spherical waves to the edges. Do like radio waves and stuff also curve around objects? Like, is that why they can go th through it? So do they not actually go through things? Uh, let's see. I might not be up to date on that myself. But yeah, in general, any type of wave can curve around an object. That's right. Uh, I think it works better when the wavelength is big relative to the object. I think that if the wavelength is very small relative to the object, it goes approximately straight, and you don't get much curvature from that. 